Did you know that women's wombs were shaped differently 2 million years ago than what they are now? Giving birth is an essential part of being human, and it has changed a lot over the course of history. To really understand what childbirth was like in the past, we need to look at how humans evolved and who our ancestors were. Know the shocking facts about how our ancestors gave birth in prehistory by watching till the end. Human development is complex and started millions of years ago. Prehistoric humans including Homo habilis, Homo erectus, and Homo sapiens shaped birthing practices. These early people lived in various regions and faced different issues than current civilization. We may learn about our evolution by studying prior childbearing beliefs and practices. It helps us comprehend our predecessors' struggles in locations with diverse cultures, medical knowledge, and sometimes none. Two million years ago, giving birth was difficult and risky due to our predecessors' distinct anatomy. Today's medical knowledge and technology were unavailable to our forebears. What we can learn about how women gave birth 2 million years ago from fossils and other historical finds is very useful. Researchers have put together information from skeletal remains and objects to get a picture of how people gave birth in that time, even though there isn't a lot of direct proof. Early human pelvic remains, like those of Australopithecus, give us clues about the birth canal's shape and size. Based on these remains, it looks like the female hip was bigger and more curved, which made room for the baby's head during birth. Fossils of baby bodies can show how babies were positioned when they were born. For instance, the fact that preserved babies have their heads pointing downwards says that head-first pregnancies were widespread, just like they are today. Women's problems and physical stress during childbirth can be seen in their bones by showing signs of pelvic fractures or other birth-related injuries. These injuries show, in a roundabout way, how hard it was for women during labor and delivery. Some archaeological finds, like drawings and objects from long-ago caves, show scenes linked to giving birth. These pictures give us a look into the cultural practices and traditions that were used during that time to celebrate childbirth. They might show women in different situations with other people around them giving support and help. Grave goods that show traditional ideas and practices about childbirth are often found at burial places. The appearance of birthing tools or figures and other items connected to childbirth shows how important childbirth was in this culture. It is important to remember that figuring out what this information means takes careful study and thought about the bigger picture of culture and surroundings. Even though these results are useful, they only give us a small picture of how our early human ancestors gave birth. The pelvic anatomy or birth canal of prehistoric women was different from that of modern women in several ways. One notable difference was the size and shape of their pelvises. Prehistoric women typically had a wider pelvic structure compared to modern women. This wider pelvis allowed for easier passage of the baby through the birth canal during childbirth. The pelvis of prehistoric women also had a different angle compared to modern women. The pelvic inlet, which is the upper opening of the birth canal, was typically wider and more oval-shaped. This provided more space and flexibility for the baby to navigate through the maternal pelvic bones during labor. Another difference lies in the pelvic outlet, which is the lower opening of the birth canal. In prehistoric women, the pelvic outlet was generally wider and more spacious. This allowed for a smoother and easier passage of the baby's head and shoulders during delivery. These anatomical differences in the pelvic structure of prehistoric women were advantageous during childbirth in a time when medical interventions were not available. The wider pelvis and more flexible birth canal provided the necessary space for the baby to pass through the maternal pelvis with relative ease. Prehistoric women's strength and perseverance were shown in childbirth. 
prehistoric mothers used their intuition and societal support to handle delivery without contemporary medical assistance. The communities had healers with generations old wisdom. Expectant moms relied on this healer for serenity and comfort. The healer had seen many deliveries and understood the body's natural capacity to give birth. The healer and village women comforted the pregnant mother. They often arranged an isolated space with luxurious furs and warm flames for childbirth. It was instinctual for the expectant woman to submit to delivery with each contraction. The healer and village ladies massaged, spoke, and comforted the pregnant mother. They understood the value of emotional support and felt a quiet, cheerful atmosphere may relieve labor pain. The healer often taught the woman who was expecting breathing techniques and advised her to trust her body. The primitive village's skillful healer gives pregnant women hope and comfort. She knew the body and labor well. She learned from women who came before her for years, collecting their wisdom. Her instincts and unrelenting commitment to mother and baby well-being set her unique. After hearing that a woman was pregnant, the community usually called a healer. She often went to the pregnant mother's house with her handcrafted basket of herbs, plush furs, and tranquility. Her role respected each birth because she thought it was precious. The healer would calm the mother with natural smells and music in the dimly lighted room. She reminded the mother that her body was strong and competent, citing the history of previous mothers. The healer's gentle back massage relieved the laboring mother's pain and relaxed her. She taught the woman breathing methods to relax down during contractions. The healer soothed and encouraged throughout labor. Her compassion helped the expecting mother cope with pain and stress. She understood emotional assistance was as crucial as physical during labor. The healer supervised the woman's labor to protect mother and baby. While they lacked sophisticated medical technology, the healer used her good senses and expertise to monitor labor. The healer used village plant medicines to relieve the woman's pain and ease delivery. As delivery approaches, the healer prepares to receive the baby. She would deliver the baby safely and gently with trained hands. She caressed the infant with love and affection. After hours of struggle, the mom gave birth to a lovely baby. As the town welcomed fresh life, tears of pleasure and relief flooded the space. The mom hugged her baby, overwhelmed with gratitude for the help she got throughout this changing journey. Healers also worked outside the delivery area after birth. In subsequent visits, she advised the new mother on nursing, postpartum healing, and motherhood's emotional issues. The healer knew the journey continued as mother and baby negotiated their new relationship. The healer was revered throughout the community. Her expertise and kindness calmed the neighborhood, healer and tower of strength and wisdom. She ensured the wonder of birth was welcomed with love, support, and respect. As years passed, the healer's lessons and legacy allowed other village women to continue her vital role. Her loving care and unrelenting devotion shaped the village's childbearing strategy. In subsequent days, the community cared for her infant. The women advised her on nursing, infant care, and postpartum recovery, helping her through this difficult period. Prehistoric women offered important care and assistance to one another, even when medical treatment did not exist. Their expertise, natural cures, and emotional support fostered mother and baby. Over the course of human evolution, our anatomy has undergone significant changes, including adaptations related to childbirth. These changes reflect the complex interplay between our physical structure and the demands of giving birth. In prehistoric times, as with other mammals, our early ancestors likely had a pelvis shaped differently than what we have today. 
the pelvis was wider and more conical, resembling that of other primates. This shape allowed for the birth of infants with relatively large heads compared to the size of the maternal pelvis. As humans evolved, our bodies underwent several modifications to accommodate the increasing demands of childbirth. One significant change was the widening and reshaping of the female pelvis. These adjustments allowed for easier passage of the baby's head through the birth canal. Another crucial adaptation was the rotation of the sacrum, the triangular bone at the base of the spine. The sacrum became broader and more curved, providing a larger space for the baby to pass through during birth. Additionally, the coccyx or tailbone became more flexible and movable, further facilitating the birthing process. Furthermore, the muscles and ligaments surrounding the pelvis also underwent modifications to support childbirth. The pelvic floor muscles, for example, became stronger and more flexible, aiding in the expulsion of the baby during delivery. The ligaments that hold the pelvis together also became more stretchable, allowing for increased flexibility during labor. These anatomical changes were driven by the evolutionary pressure to ensure the survival and successful reproduction of our species. As human brains grew larger over time, infants were born with comparatively undeveloped heads, requiring flexibility and space in the birth canal. In modern times, medical advancements have allowed for interventions and assistance during childbirth, mitigating some of these challenges. Caesarean sections, for example, can be performed when natural birth poses risks to the mother or baby. However, our evolutionary adaptations continue to shape the dynamics of childbirth. Understanding the changes in human anatomy over time helps us appreciate the remarkable journey of childbirth and the intricate relationship between our bodies and the process of giving life. It is a testament to the ongoing evolution of our species and the remarkable adaptability of the human body. We've looked at how giving birth has changed over the last 2 million years. We've talked a lot about how far we've come in knowing and helping with childbirth. One important thing that was talked about is how much we have learned about childbirth. There was a time when childbirth was wrapped in mystery and myth. Now, we have a lot of science study and medical knowledge at our disposal. We've been able to make birthing safer and more successful thanks to our better knowledge. Also, big changes in childbirth have been made possible by big improvements in technology. From ways to deal with pain to medical procedures like cesarean sections, these changes have made things better for both moms and kids. Overall, thinking about this natural path shows how far we've come in how we understand and support childbirth. As we work to give the best care to pregnant women, we keep learning more about this normal process. While the evidence from fossils and archaeological discoveries regarding childbirth practices 2 million years ago is limited, there are some intriguing and occasionally shocking facts that have been uncovered. It's important to approach these facts with an understanding of the limitations of the available evidence and the context of the time period.